Hi, welcome to the Bridge Podcasts. We hope you enjoy the following message. For more information on all that's happening at the Bridge Church, please visit www.bridge-church.com. At this point, um, we just want to acknowledge all the people who've helped us in the Bible school um, to bring this year to a successful end. It has not been easy, and I'm sure the students um, um, will attest to that. It involves a lot of hard work, um, monitoring students, um, making sure that assignments are on time. And I, I, let, me, let me say one thing. Like Pastor Benny said, it is not just that we certificate around the corner. This is actually an internationally recognized degree that these um, students have embarked on. And it's actually recognized, you know, um, anywhere they take that certificate in in the world, it will be recognized as a proper degree that you will get from University of Strathclyde or from Glasgow University. So it is not just a thing that has just been produced in-house. But to make all this happen, we, we needed a lot of help. So we want to acknowledge the people who have helped us. First of all, we want to acknowledge Isabel Hill. <laughs> who has worked tirelessly. Yes, if you come up, please. Who, who has worked tirelessly, keeping everything in order. She's there, you know, 6 o'clock to make sure that ev- the doors are open. She's making sure that students sign in and do all the, the things they're supposed to do. To very honest, you know, she's like a head teacher. <laughs> and I'm sure all the Bible school students will agree to that. She keeps you on the straight and narrow. There's no gray areas. It's either black or white. Isabel, we just want to say thank you very much for your help. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say thank you to my friend and my brother, Dermot, who is the vice dean of the Bible school. Without him, there's no way we could have Bible school. When I'm having a hard time, he will step in and come and do the teaching. Dermot, I just want to say thank you for what you do for the Bible school. We also want to say thank you to some um, people, um, some of the pastors who helped teach. We want to say thank you to Pastor Sarah, if you could come up. Thank you so much for teaching us on prayer. We know you're a woman of prayer, and what you have imparted to the students is priceless. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We also want to say thank you to our brother and pastor David, who also helped us, teaching us about demons and things like that. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. you. We also want to say thank you to Aina and Jan, if they're here. These ladies come up every single Tuesday to make tea and coffee for the students at no extra cost. They do that out of their own free time. We just want to say thank you to you for what you've been doing, and we hope that you continue to do that for us in the coming years because we really enjoyed your tea and your coffee. Thank you. Oh, I got it wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We just want to say thank you as well to... 
the Bible school administrator. I think she's, she's not expecting to come up. But I think if somebody can take her baby away from her, because I really, really want to acknowledge her. You know, she works tirelessly. You know, she has a baby. And I, I, I tell her, look, you're having a baby. You just drop everything. I'll, I'll sort it. I just like, no, 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 I'll do it. So she has a baby, picks the, the pieces up, and just carries on. These are the people that we need in the body of Christ. Deirdre, you're a wonderful woman of God. Thank you. Yes, yes, good. Mm. Okay. yes. And then, last but not the least, I just want to say thank you to my beautiful bride and wife, Dorothy. Yeah, she's not expecting it. It's, all, it's always nice. It's always nice when, when you can hide things, you know, and, and surprise a woman. But thank you very much for allowing me to, to run the Bible school because it takes a lot, you know, out of us um, on a weekly basis. She has allowed us to do that. Plus, she helps with marking of papers and different things like that. Honey, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. We're now going to invite um, Pastor Peter up. I think um, Pastor Bernie, oh no, I think um, Dermot has already introduced him. Um, he is going to give us the um, graduation speech and then I'll come back. And then we um, will graduate the students there. So can we um, stand up and just welcome Pastor Peter um, to give us the Bible school address. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. What a wonderful occasion. Amen. Just so you know, I don't need glasses. It's just that my arms aren't long enough. Okay. So I want to thank Pastor Bernie and Pastor Nan for this uh, privilege, this honor of being here this morning in this wonderful church. Uh, I have a lot in common with your, your pastor, actually, because I, too, left uh, the United Kingdom in 1978 to go to South Africa, and I was, as they say, lost, as lost as a goose in a snowstorm. And I went to Johannesburg, and I met Jesus... In 1983, at the same church that Pastor Bernie and Nan uh, uh, got saved in. And I've been a member of that church ever since. And everything that I know, I have learned through the pulpit ministry of uh, Dr. Theo and, and Dr. Bev. And I'm very grateful for that. I also want to thank Dr. Aquafu and Do uh, Dorothy Dermot for this wonderful occasion. You guys have worked so hard. Trust me, I know what it's like to run a Bible school. And um, it's not just about teaching and about lectures. Uh, so, so my prayers are with them, and this is a great occasion, and you guys have handled yourselves very, very well. Um, as we start, I would just like to speak for a moment to the, to the congregation. You know, one of the, the things that I do, and this is just the way I am, that I find in the Bible some scary scriptures. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I read the scriptures, they're a little scary to me. And you know, one of my scariest scriptures is found in, in Matthew 7, verse uh, 22. And this applies to all of us, and I'd like to read it to you um, and encourage you this day regarding the Bible school. It says in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Now, the reason that's a little scary to me is that I can understand from what I've been taught that to cast the devil out of somebody, you need to be born again, spirit-filled, right? To lay hands on the sick and expect them to recover, the power of God must work through you. This speaks of performing miracles, and yet it teaches me that it is possible to do all of those things and to stand before Jesus and for him to say, I didn't know you. And you know what I love about this Bible school? That the theme of first year is intimacy with God through a personal relationship. 
And I believe if you invited each and every one of these second-year students to stand and testify, they would testify as a result of that first year that they really grow, grew to know God, but also to have an assurance that God knew them. Amen? So I would challenge each and every one of you today, if you've not done Bible school, I know that the bridge is about to, to start a, a new intake of first-year students. I would encourage you to prayerfully consider, allow the Lord to speak you, to you about be, becoming a Bible school student. Personally, I think every Christian should do at least first-year Bible school. Amen? Do you see those people that said amen, doctor? You need to get their names quickly. <laughs> amen. All right, now to your students, I want to say that I'm really proud of you. I know the work that you've put in. And uh, I remember just a few years ago when my beautiful wife, Pastor Annelle, when she did Bible school, she used to terrorize me, especially when it got, to, got close to the exam times. She would really put a lot of hours into it, and I know you have too, and we're so proud of you. And I want to speak to you just for a few minutes about leadership, because we are all leaders in God's army to a certain extent, even if you're only leading yourself. <laughs> Amen. And much of what I'm going to share this morning is from the teachings of John Maxwell, who I acknowledge to be one of the greatest teachers in the area of leadership in the world today. But I want to challenge you with this as, as you finish second year and are about to enter third year. And it speaks of certain principles in leadership. Will it, leadership is the willingness to put, put oneself at risk. You know, in the kingdom of God, we have to be able and prepared to put ourselves at risk. Leadership is the passion to make the difference with other people. It is a calling. It's not a job. The ministry is a calling, amen? It's not a career. Leadership is being dissatisfied with current reality. Leadership is taking responsibility while others are making excuses. It's easy to make excuses. God is looking for people who stand up and say, let's believe God for a solution, amen? And I love what Pastor said. We are agents of change, in the lives of people, some of the people you work with, some of the people you live next door to, you are the closest thing to Jesus that they will ever meet. So we have to inspire. Amen? Leadership is seeing the possibility in the situation why others see the limitations. I know as a pastor in the ministry, it's very difficult to time because people don't like change. I'm sure that's not the case in, in, um, in Scotland, but I know most of the other places I've been in the world, people don't like change. And there's only one thing that's certain about the ministry is that, is that there will be change. Anyone have found that out just by yourself? Leadership is an open mind and an open heart. Leadership is the readiness to stand out in a crowd. Amen? Personal development. So many people will spend more on their lunch on a Sunday than they would, but they would never think of buying the CD of pastor's message. Personal development. I believe with all of my heart that the fees that you will pay to enroll on this Bible school will be the greatest investment you can make in yourself outside of accepting the Lord Jesus. Leadership, as I said, is an open mind and an open heart. What does that mean? That means to wear whatever hat the leadership asks you to wear. I know that sometimes you say we'd have a preference. I want to do this job. But I understand ministry and the amount of volunteers it takes to make this service happen week in, week out is immense. Amen? And sometimes the, the sign of somebody that has the potential of being a leader is to say, whatever needs to be done, I'm willing. Whether it's putting out chairs, whether it's serving tea, whatever it is, we have to be willing to, to 
be prepared to take on those roles. Leadership is the ability to submerge your ego for the sake of what is best for the team. Sometimes it can't be about what's best for you. Sometimes it has to be what's best for the fellowship, for the church, for the, for the work that God is involved in. Amen? Leadership is invoking in others the capacity to dream. Leadership is inspiring others with a vision that they can contribute to. Leadership is the power of one, harnessing the power of many. The leadership gift that is in your pastor is evident because of the, the quality of the leadership in this church. That is an indictment to the life of service that both Pastor Bernie and Nan have given to the Lord Jesus. You are the fruit of the investment in the Lord Jesus. Amen? Leadership is the integration of heart and soul. Leadership is the capacity to care. And in caring to liberate ideas and energy and the capacity of others. Leadership is the dream made real. Leadership is above all courage. And if these leadership thoughts quicken your pulse and, and you start to think and you think, I need to learn more about this, then Bible school is for you. It's impossible to cover all the aspects of leadership today, but I want to share with you three and then I'll hand back over to the good doctor. The first one is that we are all to understand that we are in the people business. The best leaders know that leading people requires loving people. I have never met a good leader who didn't care about his people. I once read a statement in one of John Maxwell, Maxwell's books that changed my life forever. He said, if you do not love them, you cannot lead them. And it's evident for me that I see from Pastor Bernie and Nan and the, the children and the leadership, I can see that evident that they love you. I hope you can appreciate, I hope you feel that, because for me as an outsider coming here, it is immediate how much they love you. And I know Jesus loves you. Of course, Jesus loves us all. But I can see Pastor Nan when she came in through that door and saw all her little chicks with their gowns on. I could see just that welling up of pride because she loves you. She loves all of you. Amen? Being good leaders understands that people don't, sorry, being good leaders understand, a good leader understands that people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. Amen? You must like those people or you'll never add value to them. You can never add value to a person that you don't love and like. And adding value to people is what we should all be involved in. You know, if you become indifferent to people, you may be only a few steps from manipulating them. No leader should ever do that. I must take a closer interest in the people that I choose to lead. Amen? The second thing is learning to follow before you lead. You know, it's amazing to me, but we have to learn followership. If you go to any Christian bookstore, you'll find a dozen, 20, 30 books on leadership but I haven't found a book yet entitled Fellowship. Bishop Fulton J. Sheen remarked, Civilization is always in danger when those who have never learned to obey are given the right to command. Only a leader who has followed well knows how to lead others well. Good leadership requires an understanding in the world that followers live in. Amen? And when we connect with people, it is important to remember that to connect with somebody, we should have thought about walking in their shoes. This man and this woman have walked. How long did you say you've been back in, South, in, in England? 25? 26 years. They have walked this road for 26 years. For some of you who've joined the church recently, you might think that all this just appeared. No, 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 trust me. It is many years, years of labor.
Finally, it's accountability. You know, I remember, and, and, and I, don't, I don't know whether you remember Nicky van der Vestesen Sr., Pastor Bernie. He was an outstanding man of God, a great evangelist, known throughout South Af Africa as leading hundreds of thousands to Christ. And um, in about, I think it was about 1990, 91, he was killed in a car accident. But a couple of years previous to that, he had left his wife and his, his three children, and he had had an affair. He fell. He fell from grace. Now, I am a personal friend of his son, or one of his sons, uh, Dr. Nick, uh, Nicky Jr., Nicky van der Vestesen Jr. And a little, uh, maybe five years ago, he spoke to us about a dream that he had concerning his father. And in his dream, he saw his father through a glass divide, and he could, he could speak to his father, but he could not talk to him. And he said to him, Dad, how could you let this happen? How could you, how could you have done this to mom? And how could you have done this to, to, to me and, and my brother and sister? And, and how could you have done this to the body of Christ? And you know, he said to me, he said, he said, Pastor Peter, my father spoke to me in the dream. And he said to me, as he looked through the glass, he looked at me and said, Nikki, accountability, accountability, accountability. As leaders, it is so important that we remain in a house where you can have that accountability. I know several men, I don't need more than two hands, but Pastor Bernie is definitely counted on those two hands of men, of men who has the right to say to me, follow me as I follow Christ. You are blessed to have a pastor, man and woman of God like that in this house that live the life the way God wants to, them to live. Amen? And you can be accountable to them and to each other. And, and you know, I know that uh, a, a brother, uh, John Bevere, is a, is a close friend of your pastor. And I remember once sitting with, with uh, 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 John in, in the presence of Pastor Theo and, and Bev, and we were having dinner. And, and, and John Bevere was speaking to Pastor Theo and relating a story to him about, John, uh, about Jim Baker. You know, who's also a very well-known evangelist who ended him up in prison. And, and the Lord spoke to John Bevere and said he must go to speak to Jim in prison. And he said to him that he started a relationship. And one day, John Bevere asked Jim Baker this and said, Jim, when did you stop loving Jesus? And I thought the answer was amazing because Jim Baker said to John Bevere, John, I never stopped loving Jesus. I stopped fearing him. The fear of God ties in with that accountability. We need to be accountable to each other. Amen? The devil would love to sidetrack you. As I close, I want to you to think about these words and to remember this, if nothing else. In the absence of good leadership, people will follow the loudest voice. You have great leadership in this church. Remember, students, to remember to be great in God's kingdom, you must be a servant of all. In closing, I pray that you'll all enjoy this moment of acknowledgement of what you've accomplished. And as you come forward this morning to receive your uh, diplomas, I want you to enjoy, to savor that moment, to savor it with each other, to savor it with your family, to savor it with your friends. But then I want you to immediately, if you haven't already done so, sign up for third year. Don't let the devil whisper in your ear and say you need a rest. Don't get sidetracked. Finish the race. You're two-thirds of the way through. And this time next year, you will be receiving your degree in ministry. I receive this challenge from the Lord very seriously. I left I was on staff for 20 years in Johannesburg. And the Lord called me and sent me with my beautiful wife to this, to this island to start Bible schools. This Bible school. I believe in the curriculum. I believe it's not only changing your life, but changing the lives around you. Amen? So remember, reach for the top because the bottom is crowded. Amen? God bless you all. Thank you, good doctor.
Thank, thank you, Pastor Peter, for this um, wonderful words of encouragement. I think it's, it's a word in due season, I believe, for the church. Could um, the media team please put up um, Proverbs 4, starting from verse 1. I want to do something a little bit different before we go on. The Bible says in Proverbs 4, from verse 1, My children... Listen when your father corrects you. Do, do, do we have it in the New King James, please? Wonderful. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I, was in my father's, when I was my father's son, tender, and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, you get it. In the beginning, it said what? Pay attention to your father. We've got a father and a mother in the house that we need to pay attention to. They have set this thing all up. Without them, we wouldn't have Bible school. Without their guidance, some of us who probably would have made some really serious mistakes in life. So at this point, I just want to honor Pastor Bernie and Naim for, for being such visionaries and setting up this church and bringing in the Bible school. Pastor Bernie and Pastor Nan, we appreciate you. We just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And we also want to honor Pastor Theo and Pastor Bev for also being visionaries and giving us a program like this. They've bent the rules so much for Scotland, and we just want to say thank you to CFCI Bible School in Johannesburg for what they have done for the nation of Scotland. I believe this is going to um, just escalate and just go everywhere in future, in Jesus' name. Amen. Just to give you a little bit of a background about what the students have actually achieved. Like I said, the program is actually a university degree, an equivalent, um, equivalent to any university degree you'll find anywhere. So they have lectures which, um, and group work which consists of about 120 hours, reading of about 345 hours, tests and reports of about 20 hours, Practical skills and, uh, and written, as, um, sorry, and practical assignments, 405 hours. Attendance to live group, church services, and all other meetings that we have, 300 hours. So in total, they put in a minimum of about 1,200 hours to get this diploma that they are getting tonight. Or oh, this, this, this afternoon. So it is not just a thing that we're just handing over to them. They've really worked hard for it, and we just want to say congratulations for what you have done. The Bible says that when Jesus comes, he's going to look for the good and the faithful servant. You have been faithful. You have been diligent. Thank you very much for being diligent. So at this point, I'll hand over to Dermot, and he will mention the names, and you will come up stage and take your, your, your diploma and then shake the faculty, and then you can get down on the other side. So I'll hand over to Dermot now. Take it away. Wow. Okay. 
So what we'd like to do now is invite all of the students to come forward. As I mentioned earlier, it was a great year and every student has passed, so that was fantastic news. We were going to offer out or give out the diplomas in, uh, in three groups based on the marks that the students have achieved and accomplished during the course of the year. So first of all, we'd like to invite those students who were awarded a diploma in ministry, having achieved a mark of greater than 60% to come forward. First of all, Andrew Smith. <laughs> Secondly, Nancy McLeish. Elaine Kelso. <laughs> Ian Haining. Karen Haining. Audrey McMail. Alec Brown. <laughs> Graham Welch. Umberto Pino. <laughs> Elspeth Dorans. and Pastor Mark Fraser. Now the following students are awarded a certificate, oh, sorry, a diploma in ministry with distinction, having achieved a mark of greater than 80%. Firstly, Pastor David McLaughlin. <laughs> Roy Banks.
Lindsay Donerkey. Frances McLean. <laughs> Myra Mallon. Marily Theron. <laughs> Karen Hollywood. Frances Hodgkinson. <laughs> and finally, Pastor Gary McLaughlin. And finally, the following students are awarded a diploma in ministry cum laude, having achieved an overall mark of greater than 90%. Firstly, Elizabeth Betty Smith. Isabel Hill. <laughs> and Pastor Sarah McLaughlin. Now, we have one more prize to give out, and that is the prize for the top student in the year who achieved an overall mark of 95%, Pastor Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, could I ask the Bible school students to stand? Can I present to you your graduating class of 2013? Congratulations, everyone. Now what I would like to do is ask 
Pastor Bernie and Nan to lead the faculty, followed by the Bible school students out. Would everyone stand, please, and uh, receive the blessing today. Father, we're thankful for your grace, your face that shines down upon each and every person, Lord. We're thankful, Father, for your mercy in their life. We're thankful, Father, that you are leading them. You're a standby for them, Lord, and you're guiding them in the way they should go. Father, let this week be the greatest week that they've ever had in their lives, Lord. And Father, may that word that they've heard this morning be ingrained in their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and uh, hang around for some tea. Thanks for listening. Remember to visit our website, www.bridge-church.com and connect with us via Facebook and Twitter.